Welcome to the next lesson in our complete intro to rendering in Blender course. Quick reminder, we're offering the entire first unit of our course for free for a limited time here on YouTube. If you're new here, I'd recommend starting at the beginning of the course. I've added a link in the description. All right, go ahead and open up Blender and let's jump right in. In this lesson, we'll cover the final step of our rendering checklist. And that's once you've rendered the final image, often, if you're thinking like a professional photographer, you'll want to take it into another program like, say, Photoshop or Lightroom to enhance that final image. But we can actually do that right inside of Blender. And so in this lesson, we're going to talk about how to enhance this final rendering using the compositor in Blender. Now, in order to follow along, you'll need to continue with the file we were working on. And if you followed from the previous lesson, you just click to render your final image. And you'll need to have done that step before you can move into the next step of working with the compositor. So if you haven't already, you would go back into Blender, go up to the Render Menu option, and click Render Image. I've already done this, so I'll hit Escape, and I'm tabbing back over to that window to show that final image that was rendered. Now, let's say that this image is looking great, but I wanna see if I can make some subtle adjustments to the color or to the contrast. That's something we can do using the compositor. So back over in the regular Blender window here, go ahead and click on the Compositing tab. Now at first there's nothing here, but go ahead and click on the checkbox for use nodes. And you'll see there's some nodes here, they're a little bit off view, so I'll hold down the shift key and hold down the center mouse wheel and move the mouse down to pan the view down. And now I can see what we're working with here. And we have two nodes. The first node is the rendering. So it says render layers, and there's so much more to the compositor than what we're gonna get into in this lesson. And you'll see in future lessons what we mean when we say render layers. But for right now, just think of it as we have one, and that's that final rendering. And we can see a low resolution version of that image here. And then over here, it says composite. So this is an output node. And the best way to think about it is we're gonna add some nodes in between this first one and this last one. So in between these two that alter and change the image so that out the other end in the composite node, it would spit out the final adjusted image. Now, before we move any further, we'll wanna make sure that we have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. Now, we did this in a previous lesson, so if you've been following along, you've already completed this step. But if you haven't already, make sure to go up to your Edit menu, pick Preferences. On the left-hand side, click on Add-ons, and then search for Node Wrangler, W-R-A-N-G-L-E-R, -E and you'll see here Node Wrangler, and you can check that box on. I've already done so, so I can go ahead and close the preferences window. Okay, so I mentioned that we're going to take this image here and we're gonna make some adjustments that will spit out the other end, the composited image or that final enhanced image. But I'd like for us to be able to see the adjustments we're making. So see an image that is being adjusted as we go. That won't happen to this image here. So we're actually gonna to need to create a node that's gonna allow us to view this image in the background as we make adjustments to it. So let's go ahead and do this. Click on the Render Layers node here. Click and hold down and drag it over to the left. You can actually roll your mouse wheel to zoom out a bit to give yourself some more space here. So I'll drag it over to the left. And then for the Composite node, let's click and drag it over to the right. So we know we're gonna drop some things in between here, and I wanna make some space so that in the background, we can see a nice big image of what our final image will look like. Now, in order to enable that backdrop, we're gonna to need to add a node. So Shift A, and we need this to be an output node because it's going to output a viewer. So let's go to Viewer, go ahead and click on that, and you've got a viewer node, and let's put it over here just on top of the composite node. So click and let go. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna click and drag from this yellow dot from image and connect it up to the viewer image socket here and you see now that we can view this image in the background. And really all we're doing right now is we're taking this image and we're putting it over here, which means we're viewing the exact same thing. This image is now being viewed in the background here much bigger. Now we're gonna drop nodes in that will take this original base, make adjustments, and then allow us to spit out a final composite. But we want it to also show those same changes in the viewer. So instead of these being two separate noodles that are connecting these sockets, I'd rather there be one noodle going away, and on that noodle we'll make some changes, and then at the end we'll branch it so that it connects to both the image in the viewer and the image in the composite. 
So the way to do that is once you have these two noodles, go ahead and hold down the shift key and then put your cursor up above the top noodle, hold down the right click and drag down across both noodles and let go. And it'll essentially add a new little connector here and it will collapse this down. So you have one noodle going here and then it breaks off into these two here. So nothing really changed about what was going on, but now it'll make it easier for us to drop a node in on this noodle and have whatever happens here affect both the viewer and the composite. Again, the viewer is just our ability to see it back here. And then the composite is the actual output we're looking for. It's compositing all these things together into the final output. Hey everyone, we're doing something a little unconventional here. And for a limited time, we're giving you access to the entire first unit of one of our paid courses for free right here on YouTube. And this lesson is a part of it. Blender is a beast of a program to learn, but with the right approach, it doesn't have to be. That's why we created Blender Academy, to help people build the Blender skills they need and then go out and get the jobs they want. We hope you find these lessons to be a good investment of your time. If you do, and you're serious about learning Blender, head over to our website and continue learning with us. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And now back to the lesson. Okay, so let's go ahead and do something with the color of this. We can add a node to adjust the color. So shift A and let's find color and adjust. And there's all different types of adjustments we can make to the color. Let's go ahead and pick hue saturation. Go ahead and click on that. And then it's attached to your cursor and somewhere along this noodle, go ahead and click to set it down and it'll automatically connect the image sockets here and the image sockets here. Now, anything that we do here will be shown to us in the viewer and it'll be available to us in the composite. So for example, let's say that you wanted to dial the saturation down to make this black and white. Just click and slide this all the way to the left and you've made this image black and white here. So notice it doesn't change that base rendering but this viewer shows us what this node is changing for us. And you see that change is being made because you can see it there in the image that the viewer is showing us. Now let's say that we also wanted to adjust the contrast. Shift A to add a new node, hover over color, adjust, and let's go over to where it says brightness contrast, click there, and then move your cursor onto that noodle and click and let go and it'll automatically connect up. And now you could take the contrast, click, hold down, and drag it a little bit to the right to deepen that contrast a bit. Make those darks a little darker and the lights kind of pop out more. Now at any point in time, if you've added several effects and you're not sure which is having what kind of impact, you can always mute one of those nodes so you see what difference it makes, whether it's turned on or off. So for example, click on the hue saturation value node and press M for mute. And now you'll see the contrast is still there but now you haven't turned down the saturation so you get the color version of the image. You can press M again to turn it back on and you could do the same with the other node. Click on it, press M, and now you'll see with no contrast what that looks like. Press M again to turn it on. Now there are so many other nodes that you can use in the compositor node editor here. And right now we're not worried about covering every possible thing that you might do. The main idea is that you can come into the compositor editor you can link things up, especially making sure you link up the viewer there so you can see what you're doing. And then experiment and play around with adding nodes and connecting them up, making adjustments, and seeing how you can enhance that final image. For right now, when you're brand new to Blender, you're mostly gonna be dealing with those color nodes where you're gonna be adjusting different things about the color and contrast of the image. Now that being said, once you have something that you'd like, you need to save that final image. To do that, go ahead and click on the viewer node, then come over to the right and click on the node tab, and then click on the option for save this image. There you can name it, so I'll name it black and white, monkey render, and under format, you can flip it to whatever option you'd like. So it's defaulting to PNG for me, but I could pick JPEG or whatever else I'd like from that list, and then go ahead and click save this image. Now, of course, there's so much more that you can do when it comes to compositing your images in Blender. For right now, though, this is the first step that you need to learn, which is that final image can be enhanced using the compositor. And all you need to do when you get here is set up the compositor to use nodes. And then from there, experiment with dropping in nodes, connecting them up, and experimenting with what kind of final result you can get. 
Now, as I've mentioned a few times in these lessons, we dive so much deeper into the rendering process and each step in that rendering checklist we've been covering, we go all the way inside of what all of the options are for lighting, what more of the options are for creating materials and everything about all of the shader nodes, the compositor nodes, and pretty much everything you need to know to create really stunning renderings of what you model in Blender. That being said though, you already know enough to jump in and start experimenting on your own. So I recommend that before you dive into our full course on rendering, now's a great time to take everything you've learned from the last few lessons and try it on something of your own. So you could create something simple or even download a model that you find that's available for Blender, open it up and go through the same checklist that we've just covered in these previous lessons. Try to set up your camera, try to set up the lighting, add materials and colors, get your final render settings correct, and even play around with this final step of enhancing your final image. The more you experiment with what you've just learned, but on a separate project where we're not walking through it step by step together, the more you'll see where the holes in your learning are. And then when you dive into the rest of our course and the rest of our lessons, you'll already know those areas where you especially need to pay attention. But that being said, congratulations on making it through these lessons. Good luck experimenting. And if you have any questions at all, email us at team at blenderacademy.com and we'll be happy to help. But for now, good luck and happy blending. Congratulations, you made it through the entire first unit of our complete intro to rendering and blender course. Did you find this course to be helpful? Do us a favor and let us know why in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. From here, if you're serious about learning Blender, we can help. Head over to blenderacademy.com to learn more. And if you're not ready to get serious just yet, I recommend checking out one of these videos from our channel. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy blending.